people knew something was wrong, but they couldn't quite put their finger on it. As I just started telling them, like, this is what's happened and this is what I lived with. Most of my abuse was psychological, spiritual, financial, and a lot of times I would pack my stuff, I'd be ready to go after a big episode. And he would be sitting at the table with his Bible open and, you know, praying and he's sorry and he knows God wants better and he would get mad and throw things, intimidate me, get in my face like he would hit me even though he didn't. And so you would convince yourself he would never really hit me. The truth was that's how he controlled me because I was scared that he would. I would confront him and he would just say, oh, that's not what happened and try to convince you that it was something that it wasn't. And um, so you just feel very confused and like all of that kind of builds up and like just very emotionally burdened to the point it's hard to function at times, just not recognizing myself. And then just getting to the point that I couldn't get through the day without crying several times a day over nothing. He didn't like for me to have friends either. And I had made a good friend at work and um, we were gonna go watch a movie with her family. And um, that day he picked something like laundry, I think it was, to be mad about and left and went and got drunk and called me to come pick him up. And he was punching my dashboard in the car and yelling at me. And he picked up a ball and hitch and hit the back of his truck and left a dent in it. And at that point, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I left him. He had made physical threats on my life. And I went to the police and I ended up at a courthouse. A man worked there and I actually knew him because I had visited a church that he um, led music at a while back. And he said, you know, I think you should call Safe Harbor. And he gave me the number. And I went home that day and called them and they were amazing. And I never, never would go back because I knew what it meant. Safe Harbor is so much more than a shelter or a safe house. Um, I didn't even use that. It really became just an amazing, wonderful godsend to my life. They went with me, I sent a lawyer with me to court. I had representatives from Safe Harbor that helped, um, went with me and supported me and helped get a protective order for me and got me and my daughter in counseling, which made all the difference. Well, life is great. <laughs> life is great. I can tell a huge difference in me and my daughter. We're happy just pictures we even take. I can see a physical change in my face, like my smile is real. What Safe Harbor provided for me was a support system, how to retrain my brain and tell, be kind with myself, you know, and not, if I make a mistake, not beat myself up about it and, and wear that shame that had been put on me in my relationship. It was just little steps like that, you know, and just learning to reclaim me and be me unapologetically. There are some amazing ladies, both on staff and just other survivors that I have met and made some very dear friends. I just feel really pumped when I meet, when I go to the meetings and like we're all talking and we're all sharing and we're all talking about what we want to see happen and the message we want people to know. We're all kind of throwing ideas out. It's like girl power at its finest. I mean, we're just, you know, we're all strong now. We're all come out of everything and it's like we want to affect change and like we're working together to make sure that happens. I'm on the good side of everything now and I'm reaping the healing that I've gone through and and I just want to share that because I want others to like experience where I am versus where I've been.